1778, scientists discovered a new phylum, Ketignatha, also known as arrowworms. There are over 100 species within the phylum Ketignatha. Ketignaths are usually 1 mm to 12 mm long and appear to be transparent. Some species found in deep water environments are pigmented orange or have an opaque appearance. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical with paired lateral fins and a single tail fin. Ketignaths have a thin cuticle layer covering their epidermis. Their mouths are hidden inside a vestibule on the ventral side of their head. Depending on the species of Ketignatha, they have either hooks, spines, or teeth located near the front of their mouth. There are two orders, Phragmophora and Aphragmophora. The main difference between the two orders of arrowworm is Phragmophora possesses ventral transverse muscle bands, while Aphragmophora do not. Chattagnatha are almost exclusively found in marine environments, including estuaries and both polar and tropical regions. There is only one type of arrowworm that is not marine, the sp spadella. The rest of the arrowworms are marine and mainly planktonic. 20% of arrowworms are benthic, meaning they live just above the ocean floor in the deep ocean. Ketignaths swim in the water using their tail fins to push them forward, steering with their lateral fins. This type of motion is called dorsoventral undulating. They migrate to the bottom of waters during the day and rise to the surface at night. Chidignaths migrate throughout the day between the surface of the water to deeper levels. They do not produce larvae. The lifespan of an arrowworm ranges from six weeks in tropical waters up until two years in cold waters. They may have first appeared in the Cambrian, but it is unclear because the arrowworms fossilized poorly. Chattagnatha are carnivorous, known to feed on copiopods and other crustaceans, and small fish. The benthic species tend to ambush their prey by using adhesive secretions to stick themselves to a surface. Once they detect their prey, they expand their mouths around the prey, capturing it with its hooks. The planktonic worms use darting motions to hunt their prey, capturing it again with its hooks. Most Chattagnatha paralyze their prey by injecting them with a neurotoxin and then swallow it whole. Chattagnatha are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female reproductive organs. They possess paired ovaries in their trunks and paired testes in their tails and can self-fertilize. However, the eggs and sperm do not mature at the same time, making self-fertilization unlikely and sexual reproduction more common. Breeding tends to occur twice a year, and hatching generally occurs from April to June and late September to December, depending on the surrounding environment. They disperse their eggs either into open ocean or near the ocean floor. Embryonic development of ketignaths points them to be deuterosomes. This is because the blasto blastopore site forms the anus before the head forms. Embryos go through direct development and hatch as young adults. As they age, they grow in size. Chattagnatha are important to humans because they provide opportunities for scientific education and research. They can be used as indicators to determine the level of water from the Atlantic Ocean moving into the North Sea. The 16S tree, based on the gene sequences of the phyla, shows that Chattagnatha shares a common ancestor with the clay that includes Echinodermata, Chordata, Annelida, Arthropoda, and Mollusca. In contrast, the data matrix tree shows that Chattagnatha is most closely related to its sister taxon, Annelida. A possible explanation for this could be because they are both types of worms that share many similar traits, such as being deuterosomes, having a complete dig digestive tract, and being bilaterally symmetrical. The tree found in literature places Ketignatha closely related to Annelida and Mollusca and is distantly related to Nadaria, similar to the data matrix tree. The deuterostomal trait originated at this node, but then the ketignatha branched off from the rest of the deuterostomes. While ketignatha is technically a deuterostome, it shares many more common traits with protostomes. This explains why they are sister taxa, which is why there is uncertainty regarding its placement on the phylogenetic tree of life. This tree is different from our other trees because it compares the phyla based on ribosomal protein data 
versus character traits or gene sequences, and different phyla are being compared.